Welcome to the MacGasm Podcast. It's been a while. Um, we haven't really released anything over the summer, but starting in October, you can look forward to content both daily and weekly. Um, but until then, we thought we'd release this nice little episode because some interesting information came to light today as iOS 4.2 was shipped to developers. Um, so we installed it on one of our development machines and we thought we'd take it for a spin and tell you guys what's new, what's cool, and what's not so cool iOS 4.2 brought with it new folder structures. We now have up to 20 applications available per group. Um, this should be decent for all of your applications, different folders um, that you currently have. You may run into some difficulties if you have a lot of games or a bazillion Twitter clients. Uh, so you might find yourself using two groups per kind of grouping, but for the most part, whatever you're working with should fit into this folder structure. Pretty cool. The second major update is a unified inbox. Um, we're used to that now on the iPhone. So if you have multiple email accounts, you can now get them all in one inbox or you can keep them segregated. Um, and it works just like it does on the iPhone currently. Um, super handy. You also now have access to threaded emails. So if you're doing a huge email stream back and forth between a person, um, it's gonna group them all together so you can see the stream. It's not as good as the Gmail threaded emails, but it is better than nothing. Uh, so threaded emails, Unified Inbox, uh, iOS 4.2 Beta. Air printing is now available on iOS 4.2 Beta. Um, the technology is wireless printing. It has been renamed to Air Printing, kind of like AirPlay. Um, so essentially what happens is all the Apple applications currently um, that have had updates for iOS 4.2 now gives you the ability to print directly from application to a printer wirelessly, which is pretty handy. So as you can see here, um, what you do is you just click on the share button that you normally have in, uh, for instance, the photo application, and you'll be met with the option of print. So you click print, and you can, from there, select your printer, uh, select the number of copies you want to print, and then click on the print button. From there, it's going to transfer to your printer. You're going to get your nice little photocopies. We don't really do that too much, having photocopied or printed in ages. But if you're the type of person who does print frequently, this functionality is going to come in very handy. So that's air printing for iOS 4.2. Screen orientation lock has changed drastically in 4.2 beta. We're not too sure if it's a bug that kind of slipped its way past the development team. Um, it may go back to the way it was, but currently the lock button here that used to lock the screen orientation doesn't do that anymore. It's now become a mute button for your audio. Previously to mute, you would just push the audio down button here and it would drop and then immediately cut out all audio. So now the lock orientation is mute and if you want to lock the orientation of your screen, currently in 4.2 beta, um, it's in the multitasking section. I'm locked here. It's in the multitasking section here and you scroll from left to right and you can see the button pop. And we are now unlocked. Push it again, screen orientation locked. Also in iOS 4.2, we now have the ability to restrict access to certain applications. Uh, we're not too sure how that's going to play out or the reason for its inclusion, but as you can see here, you can set passcodes for certain applications. So I'm going to put in, so now my restrictions on, for instance, I'm going to shut off Safari. It's disabled. So I'm going to go out of Safari and I'm going to go and now you'll see Safari is no longer in my dock. It was down here. Um, so if you have, you know, youth in the house, you'll be able to restrict what they can and cannot access. Super handy. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Also available in iOS 4.2 is a new accessibility feature that lets you increase and decrease font sizes uh, for text and contacts, mails, messages, and notes. That's a pretty handy little addition to the iPad. Um, a lot of people who may be hard of seeing can now customize their font sizes. Thank you for watching the MacGasm podcast. We look forward to getting back into it in a couple of weeks and hopefully you enjoy what's coming down the pipeline.